I de-googled my Pixel 5, meaning it has almost no Google services running or Google Apps installed. And honestly, the experience hasn't been all that dreadful. It's still running Android 12, so there are probably some Google services running in the background still. It's impossible to go completely Google-less unless you switch to an iPhone, but still, we're back to a vanilla interface. Now, why would anyone want to do this? It's mainly for privacy purposes. Even though I do love Google as a company and I think they have vastly improved the security on Android, especially on Android 12, there are still some things that they've done in the past that have made people lose their trust. For example, back in 2018, it was discovered that Google services still tracked their users even if they toggled off the location history setting with an Android or an iPhone. Even till this day, there are still lawsuits against Google claiming that it's nearly impossible to stop their constant surveillance. In 2019, Google also admitted that their employees can listen in on private audio recordings uh, from people's smart home speakers, only so that they can improve the voice recognition technology. Pretty creepy. Later that year, Google was even accused of secretly sharing its users' personal data with advertisers and not providing sufficient control over the data being sent. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more where that came from. If you're honestly really interested, this article from Cupwire does a fantastic job of opening your eyes to every privacy breach that the tech giant has done for the past decade, and some of these will make your jaw drop, or even make you want to toss your phone out. Now, I don't only want to put the spotlight on Google since they aren't the only tech company out there that have mishandled their users' data in the past. Other tech giants like Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Samsung have all done the same thing and it's gotten people worried about their privacy. So if you're paranoid, let's go over some methods to stop your OEM or carrier from tracking you. The first method is just toggling off every anti-privacy setting that's enabled by default without you even knowing it. The first one will stop Google from tracking your every move on the internet just so they can show you personalized ads. So jump into the system settings, scroll down until you see Google, then tap on ads and delete your advertising ID. Then go back and tap on personalize using shared data. And in this menu, every Google app on here is allowed to use your on-device data for who the hell knows what. The fine print down below just says it'll provide you with better recommendations and suggestions. Um, I just turned off everything in this menu as well. Next, we're going to stop Google from sending your app usage data, device details, and diagnostics. Within the Google menu, just tap on the three dots, select usage and diagnostics, and turn that off. There's also a feature called Find My Device, which is really useful for ringing your phone if you can't find it in your house and you left it on silence, or if someone stole it and you want to track it down. But if you'd rather just turn it off, you can just do so within the Google section. You just have to select Find My Device and toggle off the big switch. Your phone could also be constantly scanning for nearby devices to make it easier to seamlessly connect to a Bluetooth device like your wireless earbuds or your TV. But if you don't want your phone to constantly communicate, just go into the Google menu, select Devices and Sharing, tap on Devices, and toggle off Scan for Nearby Devices. Then go back, select Nearby Connections, and also flip off the switch. Go back one last time and make sure that nearby share is toggled off. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it and it can even save you a bit of battery life. Google also has a bad habit of keeping a history of everything you've done, including logging every site you visited, videos you watched, and where you've physically gone. It's pretty scary. Let's stop this. Again, in the Google menu, select Manage Your Google Account, go to the Data and Privacy section, and there, there should be something called History Settings. Here, you can stop Google from saving your web and app activity, location history, and even YouTube history. However, let's say you don't mind that Google keeps a small history of where you've been, just in case you want to remember what you did on a specific date, or what video you just watched earlier, so that way you can find out the name. In that case, you can instead enable the auto-delete feature, which instead of going cold turkey, it deletes activities that are only older than 3, 18, or even 36 months. And while we're in the Data and Privacy tab, there's a way to see what apps or sites are allowed to access your Google account because you most likely gave them access in the past and you never revoked them. So to see what these apps are, just scroll down until you come across a title called Third Party Apps with Account Access, and then within that menu, you'll get that entire list. From there, you can revoke access to any app you don't use anymore, Definitely make sure you do this because 
You don't want an old app to accidentally obtain a data breach and it has access to your Google account. You can also find this menu within the system settings under Google, then settings for Google Apps, and then connected apps. It even lets you switch between your Google accounts, which is much more convenient. Thumbs up for that. Also within the data and privacy tab, right above the third party app section, you can get a summary of the Google services you use and the data that's been saved. If you don't use a specific service anymore, like Stadia, you can delete it so that it doesn't have your data saved. Oh, and while you're in this menu, you'll even find the option to delete your entire Google account permanently if you'd like, just in case you despise Google that much, or if you just want to delete an old account that you don't use anymore. Finally, if you go back to the main menu of the Data and Privacy tab and hop over to the Security tab, here you'll find ways to better protect your Google account, including removing old phones from your account, seeing what devices are currently signed into your account, which apps have access to your passwords, and even see which of your passwords were found in a data breach. An extremely useful menu. Google is also backing up everything on your phone into their cloud, including your photos, videos, call history, contacts, etc. So that when you switch to a new phone, it'll be easier to retrieve that data instead of just starting from scratch. I leave it on, but if you want to stop that, just go into the Google menu, select backup and toggle off backup by Google One. Last but not least, if you're concerned about your phone listening to your conversation or knowing your location, you can disable the camera, location, and microphone from the quick settings. Though the location and camera tile are only available if you have Android 12. If you're running anything lower, there's still a hidden tile that you can enable called sensors off, which instantly turns off all the sensors on your phone, including the camera, microphone, location, etc. To enable it, just go into the settings, system, developer options, if you don't know how to enable that menu, just look it up and then scroll down until you see quick settings developer tiles. On that page, enable the sensors off option and then look in your quick settings panel to find that new sensors off tile. Wow, those were a lot of settings. Really makes you realize how much of your data is actually being moved around. And now that we turned off all those anti-privacy trackers, um, the next step in degoogling your phone is replacing all your Google apps, which is something tough because some of them like Google Maps or Gmail are very reliable, but also provide some good alternatives that are open source and free. But before I do, I want to thank Masterworks for sponsoring this video. Don't you love how tech just makes things easier? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still a bit scary how it can track you and know everything about you, but look, in the grand scheme of things, I wouldn't mind being a retiree with robots serving me fancy drinks and tech making every aspect of my life easier and more convenient. There's one big issue though. Many people don't even know if they'll even be able to retire because of high inflation rates eating away at their savings, especially now since the financial markets have been down pretty much across the board. The S&P already is down over 17% in the past year, and many major stocks like Amazon are down 40, 50, or even 60%. In these types of situations, financial experts recommend you do two things to protect your wealth. One is to diversify your portfolio, and two is to invest into things with low volatility. Sounds like a tough ass, right? But it doesn't need to be. There's actually an asset class that checks both of those boxes. I'm talking about investing in physical art with Masterworks. Up until now, this was only reserved for billionaires so that they can safely store their wealth. It's even estimated that more than half of high net worth investors allocate at least 10% of their portfolio to art investments. It's a natural inflation hedge with extremely low volatility and an excellent asset for diversifying your portfolio. In fact, it's got some of the lowest correlation to the stock market of any asset class at negative 0.12. In the past, it would have taken millions of dollars to access it, but now you can get benefits at a price that works for you thanks to Masterworks. This startup is offering everyday people access to this asset class and growing rapidly as a result. It's already valued at a billion dollars, making them a legit startup unicorn. Now demand is high, so there is a wait list, but luckily for my viewers, the link in the description will allow you to skip the wait so that you can also join the other 400,000 members who are already investing with Masterworks. So don't wait and don't miss out on this offer. Anyways, back to the de-googling. If you have a tough time uninstalling any Google system apps or other bloatware, try using this program called Universal Android Bloater. It should allow you to disable most of your system apps 
and it supports a ton of manufacturers. Now let's start with the Play Store. This is extremely hard to replace since if you don't use any third party store, you won't be able to install paid apps. Unless you use a piracy store, which I don't recommend because for one, you could obtain a malicious malware, or two, it's just a slap in the face to the app developer. Instead, what I would do is install all of your paid apps from the Play Store first, and then disable the Play Store manually with Universal Android Deep Loader. After that, I recommend installing Aurora Store. It works just like the Play Store, allowing you to install and update any of the latest free apps. The interface is really well done and doesn't throw a bunch of advertising on the screen. Plus, you can bet that none of these apps have malware since they come directly from Google servers. You also don't need to sign into anything to start using this store, and you can even spoof your device model, language, and location. Another great alternative to the Play Store is AppDroid. It doesn't provide every same app, but it does come with a ton of free open source apps. A lot of them you can't even find on the Play Store. Or lastly, you can use APK Mirror, which is just like Aurora Store, but instead of being an app, it's a website. So it can't really notify you when one of your apps gets updated unless you use Pushbullet, so it's not as convenient. As I said, Gmail is also a tough one to replace, especially since Androids don't even let you use the phone without connecting to a Google account first. The only workaround would be to flash a custom ROM. Still, you can just keep the email alive and not use it, and instead turn to something like K9Mail, which can be more secure, and it's also open source. The interface looks like an older version of Gmail, but it still works extremely similarly and amazingly. It also supports PGP, which lets you encrypt your emails with someone else who also uses K9Mail. You'll just need to install an add-on app called Open Keychain, an overall solid Gmail alternative that's very privacy driven. Now, if you'd rather switch email providers to stay away from Google entirely, ProtonMail or Tutanota are two very great choices. They're both way more secure than Gmail by providing end-to-end -end encryption, having a no log policy, and are open source. They're also hosted in countries with some of the strongest privacy laws, and they each have all the basic email features so that you don't feel left out. I honestly prefer Tutanata more because it has a better looking interface and even includes an encrypted calendar. The only downside with both of these apps is that they're not as feature packed as Gmail and with the free version, they don't provide as much storage space out the gate. For messages, I'm just gonna keep it short because most of you are probably well informed on which are the best privacy driven messaging apps out there. The top two are WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. No, I'm just kidding. They're actually Signal and Telegram. Signal is the more secure one since it doesn't collect any data except for your phone number, while Telegram collects your phone number, contacts, and IP address. Still, both are really secure with end-to-end -end encryption, and Telegram is a lot more customizable than Signal. If you want to replace Gboard, there are also plenty of options out there, but if we're sticking to privacy-driven apps, Flores Board from F-Droid is by far my favorite choice. It's open source and respect your privacy. Plus, it's incredibly customizable. It has an action toolbar up top, just like Gboard to let you quickly bring up the clipboard, one-handed mode, and the undo slash redo buttons. I also enjoy that it comes with glide typing, which surprisingly, not a lot of FOSS keyboard apps support. Plus, there's so much more that you can do with it. My second favorite alternative is OpenBoard since it looks extremely similar to Gboard without all the fancy bells and whistles. It's not as feature packed as Flores and doesn't support glide typing, but it's also 100% free and open source. Chrome is one of the easier Google apps to replace since there are so many great options out there. If you don't want to steer too far away from the Chrome look but still want to stop all the Google tracking, ungoogled Chromium Android is your best bet. It's a lightweight browser based on Google Chromium, but it still removes all of Google's web services dependencies, basically only keeping the backbone and UI. It doesn't even have a landing page or a way to Google anything through the address bar. Instead, the search engine can be set to something like DuckDuckGo. It provides more privacy, control, and transparency, but it can only be found on GitHub. If you prefer just to switch to a different browser altogether, Firefox is by far the best choice out there. As a matter of fact, I would even take it a step further and use a Firefox client like Fennec AppDroid to get even more protection. Don't get me wrong, Firefox is already pretty secure, even providing enhanced tracking protection, but Fennec includes all that and stops the collecting of telemetry data, which Firefox does. It still even includes all those extra Firefox goodies like dropping the address bar to the bottom and supporting add-ons like ad blockers 
HTTPS everywhere and more. Chrome still doesn't support extensions on Android and still doesn't do that great of a job stopping trackers. Google Maps is by far the toughest app to replace because it's the best in the game and depending on your area, it could be the only option out there. Still, if you'd like to get the ultimate privacy, Osmond is pretty much the only good option out there. It's based on OpenStreetMap, works offline, and they don't collect any data. For the most part, navigation works just fine and it's able to show you the ETA arrival time somewhat well based on traffic. Still, it's really laggy, slow to react, missing some local businesses, and when searching for a location, it has trouble locking in a destination. It'll instead provide you with search results for the nearest matches of the street name. So yeah, it's not the best convenient option out there, but it's the best privacy-driven option for maps. I love Google Photos, especially since they make it very convenient for backing up and syncing everything. However, if you're looking to also dump it for something open source and just as secure, an app called Stingle Photos is a great choice. It claims that it backs up your media with end-to-end -end encryption, and unlike other companies, they only store the bare minimum of metadata. The only downside is that the free version only supports one gigabyte of storage space. Almost nothing, especially if you have a ton of 4K video recordings. If you don't trust backing up any of your media on a third-party server and prefer keeping everything local, I recommend you use Aves Gallery. It's open source and doesn't collect any personal data. Plus I love that when you tap on a photo, you can see so much information about it. Much more than what even Google Photos provides. You can even see where you took all your photos on a map since it supports OpenStreetMap if you don't have Google Maps installed. Finally, to speed things up here, I'll quickly say some of my top favorite replacements for other popular Google apps, and you guys can do your research on those. Just so you know that every one that I mentioned is free to download, open source, and secure. So let's get that out of the way. A good replacement for Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides would be only Office Documents since they also allow you to co-edit different documents in real time. For Google Keeps, two great alternatives with a similar UI are Notally and Quillnote. To replace the Pixel Launcher, my top choice is either Launcher 12.1 or Nova Launcher 7. And for Drive, I would turn to Mega. Of course, there are other apps to consider like the weather, video players, music players, calculators, calendars, etc. So if you'd like to find other great privacy-driven replacements, there's this mega post on this subreddit page called r slash Android apps where you can find so many more open source replacement apps. Oh, and this developer called Simple Mobile Tools also made a ton of great open source essentials for things like the messaging app, calendar, clock, cal calculator, dialer, etc. Make sure to check them out. Now, after replacing everything with FOSS apps, it's more than likely that a ton of your third-party apps are tracking you or even keeping a log of your user data activity. It's a bit concerning, so what I like to use is Warden to detect every tracker and logger across all my apps. Trust me, the results will shock you. Apps that you wouldn't even think have trackers, like offline games or wallpaper apps, actually have the most. Luckily, if you have root, you can also block all the trackers and loggers with a single button. The last and best way to de-Google your phone is by flashing a custom ROM. Of course, it's gonna be a bit risky and there is a learning curve to getting it done, but once you do it, your phone is going to be completely free from Big Brother. If you're not sure which ROM to flash, the best one for privacy is Lineage OS. It even supports Android 12 on its latest 19.1 build. Plus, you don't even need to flash a GAPS file because the ROM already includes a set of its own open source apps. Unfortunately, its latest version doesn't have that many devices, mostly older phones, but if you're one of the lucky few who owns a phone that they support, definitely try them out. Another great ROM is Paranoid Android. They've also been around for a while and they're mostly known for making fantastic ROMs that have crazy unique features. They're also open source and get really close to AOSP as possible, which is beautiful, but they still include Google services in its software. Unfortunately, just like Lineage OS, it doesn't support as many devices with their latest version, but it's still an excellent ROM to try out. Either way, those are all the ways to de-Google your Android phone without switching to Apple. It does take determination and a bit of effort to get it out of the spotlight with those big corporations, but once you do, you'll be all set. If you found this video to be helpful, please be sure to drop a thumbs up and save it in your favorites to find it later, and even share it with your friends who are privacy freaks. 
I also highly recommend you get subscribed with the notification bell turned on because quality videos like this get released every week and you're not gonna wanna miss out. Either way, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!